Hi everyone, this is Psycho Bible J9 uh, showing you how to make a homemade um, reptile egg incubator specifically for leopard geckos. Oh, I think this would do for like bearded dragons, things like that. Uh, what you're going to need is one of these polystyrene boxes, a thermostat, a tub that you get your crickets in, uh, vermiculite, uh, water, obviously you can just get them from the tap, and a uh, thermometer. I have a two prong digital thermometer with two sensors um, but you can use uh, like the little stick on analog dial ones if you want. I happen to think those ones are these ones are better so that's what I've gone for. Okay first what you want to do is you want to get your polystyrene tub. You can get that from any pet store that has reptiles. This is what they get their frozen pinkies in. Uh, you can see the size of it from my hand, my hand that fits in. Um, what you want to do is get a pencil and stab it, put holes in the top, um, and I've put them around the side as well, just for proper ventilation. Uh, I have also, just take the lid off, um, cut a little space here uh, in the back, just for wires to go through, uh, it make sure that, to make sure that the lid can still close properly. Okay, next we need you need your heat mat as well. Put that in there. I've sellotaped it down just so nothing's moving around. Uh, what you want to do is get your thermostat. I've got this one. It's a, a temperature thermostat by Habistat. Uh, but you can use anything where you can set the temperature uh, specifically. Specifically, sorry, of a heat mat. Uh, I've set that to. I've actually set it to around 84, 85 degrees uh, for a mixed uh, group of eggs. Get a mixture of girls and boys. Um, you can set it lower or higher within the parameters. Um, you then you want to get the sensor from your thermostat and put that on your heat mat in the middle, around just so it's uh, getting an accurate temperature. Rain, rain is. Uh, but you're reading, sorry, <laughs> half asleep today. Uh, you then want to get your tub. Uh, it's just what you get your feeder animals in, feeder insect. You then want to cut out two spaces on either end there. Not big enough for a baby gecko to get out. Uh, you see, if I shut the lid, then it will stop um, just there. There really is just this tiny wee space, and that's for the... Uh, the um, temperature sensors of your digital thermometer if you have one. If you're using the analog ones that doesn't matter, you don't have to cut the little holes, but I have. Uh, you then want to fill your tub about that way up with a mixture of vermiculite and water. Um, what I did was to get the vermiculite, put it in the tub of water uh, and squeeze it out by hand, squeeze the water out um, and then put it in. So it, it feels moist, um, but it's not soaking wet. You don't want to drown your eggs, uh, but you do want to keep it moist at all times, otherwise the eggs can crease, uh, killing the baby geckos inside. Now I can fit around six eggs in here, so what you want to do is just make little dimples like that, ready for your eggs. And when your eggs come along, you place them in one of these dimples. Let's start with the middle first, work your way out, just, you know, easily. Um, and what you want to do is get your thermometer. Um, I'm sort of doing this all on top of the snail tank. But, uh, get the... Oh, it's tangled. Get the sensors from your thermometer. Uh, and I place one in this side. And actually push it slightly into the vermiculite because you want to get a reading from around about where the heat is first touch, touching the eggs. It's around about the base of that, so where the bottom of your, the little dimple is. Don't shove it in too far though, because then it might be colder on top, and your eggs might be too cold. You might end up with girls instead of boys, if if that's what you're, um, the way you're using your temperatures. Okay, and get the other one. Same thing. This side of this is this is a really rough copy, but okay. 
and that's what those spaces are for. Um, if I can actually get them to go through, now the sensors come out there, but obviously you would make sure it stayed down. Um, put the wires in the spaces and close the lid. Okay, I should have said I preferably use one of the tubs that has you know the ventilation slits down the side. That's the ones that most people use, but I've seen other ones use just plain ones and stabbed with like little pins or something, little pinholes. Uh, place it on your heat mat. I would say lengthways for a heat mat of this size, uh, as placing it sideways, you can see it's not going to be heated properly at the side. So put it like that in the middle. Your sensor is here, right in the middle of the box at the side. You then want to get your wires. Uh, you can still take these down if it's easier for you, but make sure all your wires are. Oh, sorry, they're a bit tangled, but are going out that space at the back there. Okay, and just place your lid on. Uh, that's about you. You can have your thermometer just sitting on top. Uh, this one switches between the two temperatures like that. Um, the way the thermostat works is it's got a wire for the mains, which plugs it into the, your socket, obviously. A wire for the sensor, um, which we've shown you inside, and a wire to plug in the heat map. Uh, and that wire ends in this. Uh, and you just plug your heat mat directly into there and when it gets too hot, it really is, it centers around that one degree that you put it to uh, whether it's Fahrenheit or Celsius, it's, this one has uh, both on it if you can see that the Fahrenheit in white and Celsius in black um, you set the temperature, it'll keep it within that one degree, switch it off when it gets too hot and then when it cools down, um, it'll switch it back on again before it gets too cold uh, and that's how this would work. Um, you can check this. You don't really need to check it every day. I would advise just leaving it alone, really, if you want. I mean, you could even cut a wee space in the top or in the side and cover it with something like cling film or just clear plastic, or if you've got something similar. Um, and that way you could look in without uh, letting any of the heat out. It's, it's not too big an issue, it's just it's a bit of a get or getting all the wires at the back and everything all sorted again. Um, most of the information I have on making this uh, was gotten from videos by Augie Reptiles. Um, and I would advise looking at those videos, they're probably a lot more thorough than this one. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hopefully I'll have some eggs soon, because uh, my female, Izzy, uh, she laid two infertile eggs um, last week. Uh, we think as an indicator to the male that she's ready to mate. If I show you, whoops, everything's falling apart. They're uh, they're both in here. So that's my male Ollie, and that's my female Izzy. And we think she's pregnant. So hopefully I'll be using that incubator soon. Um, and next video should have some babies in it. So put that back. I uh, hope that helped somebody. Um, please comment uh, if you've got any recommendations for changes or if you think it's it's good, comment on that as well and that way people will know that it's half decent and will take the advice. Um, okay, thank you for watching and good luck with your gecko babies. Bye.